Okay, so I guess uh, we have now more than 200 people with us and uh, still some people are joining, uh, but it's uh, noon 30. Uh, so I, I suggest that we get going. Uh, welcome everybody uh, to this session on building a YOSC on national and thematic focused initiatives. Uh, greetings from Finland, from Helsinki. <laughs> Uh, and in the beginning, uh, I will just say a few words about the session and introduce all the speakers and then we uh, start with the program. And still uh, housekeeping issues, so basically the same applies as in all the previous sessions. Uh, we will use Slido uh, for questions and uh, you will questions and comments and uh, you find the address uh, in the uh, Zoom chat. So uh, I am Anu Nautinen, I work for the Academy of Finland and I have also been a member of the fin Finnish uh, uh, EOSC governance board team. And uh, that is basically the reason I, I uh, came to this session. So thank you for asking me to host. And uh, let me welcome uh, Jan Rusak. Uh, he is co-chair of EOSC landscape. Uh, working group, comes from the Czech Republic and uh, also has been a member of the uh, EOSC executive board. Then I'm happy to welcome uh, Professor Yo uh, Dr. Jörg Schur-Wetter. Uh, he is a director at the National Research Data Infrastructure and that is the key topic of today's session. We are really excited to hear about the German experience. Um, and uh, Professor Schoweta, uh has, this, I, if I understood correctly, you are from a leaf from Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, so that you could uh, devote your time to the, uh, this new initiative. Then I want to uh, uh, introduce uh, Professor Dr. Christoph Wolf. Uh, he is uh, president of uh, GESIS, Leibniz Institute for the Social Sciences, and also professor for sociology at uh, Mannheim University. And uh, then uh, I'm happy to introduce Professor Dr. Metap Zaslan. Uh, he is a professor in Technical Electron uh, Catalysis Laboratory and Institute of Technical Chemistry, Technical University of Braunschweig. And uh, all the last three speakers will talk about different angles to the uh, national uh, data, research data infrastructure in Germany. And also, and I like this, this is a very, very good that you are going to talk about the societal uh, relevance issues. Makes me very happy. Uh, but first, I would like to give the floor uh, to Jan uh, and uh, to talk a little bit about all EOSC landscape group and how this, how the national infrastructures uh, um, fit in <laughs> to the landscape uh, and what you have learned during the work uh, in the landscape working group. So please, Jan, uh, you, the floor is yours. Okay, colleagues, thank you for having me here. I hope you see uh, my slide. I saw it is a good kickoff for the discussion. If I use my time slot for uh, introducing you to the song findings uh, we've received in the uh, working group landscape of the Health Executive Board when exploring the landscape of EOSC related infrastructures, projects, initiatives, and policies. And I will focus on uh, infrastructures. Uh, it has to be said that uh, this entire landscaping exercise was a learning process from very early beginning. And uh, we have had a lot of fun of discovering how diverse the European landscape may look like. Uh, 
me try to push. So uh, in this slide, you see just as an introduction uh, how uh, the work of the landscaping working group was structured. Essentially, it was divided and planned into phases. First of all, we, we tried to, to come up with a landscaping report and, and uh, then we, we have uh, been designing uh, a proper mechanism to understand what we have been looking to earlier. And uh, the second part is a landscape analysis. Uh, the landscaping working group has uh, surveyed uh, a lot of information and documents on infrastructures, initiatives, investment policies related to the EOSC in the European member states, associated countries, and also in some uh, border, border countries, uh, UK uh, included due to the ex-Brexit situation. This review is particularly important uh, as sustainable long-term monitoring of the EOS uh, landscape developments at national and institutional levels is really key to provide strategic guidance for the EOS implementation process. The working group has uh, materialized, uh, work has materialized in uh, the first landscaping report on EOSC related infrastructures and initiatives, which has been recently published and is available at the EC publishing services or from the EOSC Secretariat webpage. Here we aim to collect information on uh, national policies, their development, their relation to open science. We also uh, delivered an extensive description of the uh, institutional and infrastructural landscape. And uh, we tried also to describe the organizational and, and strategic landscape saying uh, or meaning we, we, we went into depths of national research systems. We also uh, provided an, uh, or several elements of a strategic outlook and started to constitute a framework for continuous monitoring on uh, the existing readiness of countries to contribute to, to EOSC. And we suggested priorities for actions based on these monitorings. Uh, a dedicated workshop was held in April to validate the report findings and based on the feedback we've received uh, following the workshop, some of the country sheets have been subsequently updated. The country sheets were then analyzed with external help of the data creation center located in UK and the resulting effort uh, which offers a snapshot on the current state of play in 2020 is now being finalized. Uh, in addition, uh, this report, this analysis summarized the findings uh, which we have gathered also from uh, other sources, meaning uh, diverse uh, surveys done in parallel or earlier. And also it identifies good practice examples and comes with some recommendations. So it is clear that uh, this rather static description has its limits. It became uh, apparent that the information collected by the country sheets is setting a baseline and has a potential value for uh, monitoring the EOS readiness and participation across the different stakeholder communities. The analysis of the country sheet shows that the majority of countries uh, report that they are in a planning stage for open science and only few of them 
a report on progress towards implementation. However, a positive message is that an overall impression is that a fairly high degree of readiness and awareness of EOS can be reported in the member states. And also all countries describe at least one infrastructure that could be made available through EOSC for federation. This analysis has also been validated by the major stakeholders and it is in last stages of its uh, drafting and will be published by uh, end of November. Uh, the level of detail provided by the country sheets varies greatly. And uh, we have done together with DCC some brainstorming and we suggest for a need to, for a more structured description of activities and the involvement of much wider range of stakeholders across uh, the entire research ecosystem in these landscaping activities. And uh, the work of the landscaping working group underlines the importance of uh, contributions and uh, continuous monitoring, which is really essential as a strategic asset for EOS implementation. It is not only about following the, the processes, the developments in, in member states and associated countries, but uh, the monitoring has also a very strong formative effect and it contributes to alignment of policies, to coordination of investments, to sharing of good practices and so on. So uh, this analysis, develops a deeper insight into the country sheets and it complements the work being carried out by the infra EOSC 5B projects, which uh, are assessing the landscape from local, local levels. In this context, uh, the country sheets could be adapted to serve as a living EOS readiness profile that draws on uh, contributions from the member states, associated countries, and at the same level on uh, open data sources. And we have used, as indicated in the slide, several of them. The EOS partnership and the related future uh, governance structure should decide which open sources for the analysis shall be engaged and how strong uh, the engagement of the individual partners shall be. But uh, back, back to the analysis. The data as provided by the country sheets are informative, but not easy comparable. Therefore, uh, we, we, we've got additional information from the sources listed in the slide. And uh, in addition to that, we also used information coming from uh, national roadmaps. The number of research infrastructures, not surprisingly, is then much higher uh, than the uh, infrastructures reported in the country sheets. And only uh, two countries have listed more infrastructures in their country sheet than they were collected from the open data sources. Uh, just out of curiosity, it was Moldova and Serbia. So uh, it seems that uh, there is potential to make use of these open data sources to populate future iterations of the country sheets more efficiently and, and in more uh, comparable way, while the quality of the information might be collected via regular surveys and could and should be higher. So the effort needed to organize and analyze and sustain such resu uh, results might also be uh, significant. 
I'm always in troubles by pushing the slides on the different different keyboard. So uh, at the methodological side, the working group spent some fair time in uh, understanding how to structure uh, the, the, the landscape. So we started with a very general definition of inf infrastructures, which encompasses all the data infrastructures, e-infrastructures, computing infrastructures, networking infrastructures, and also thematic infrastructures. Uh, and uh, all of them have been then introduced in our, our considerations. All these infrastructures are essential element of, of EOS and all form an integrated and interconnected ecosystem. And as we have heard yesterday from Anna, uh, it is absolutely important to, 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 to consider research infrastructures and the in infrastructures in the context of open science as an integral part. And uh, they have also a very important role to play in the new uh, concept of the European research area. We have seen how already now this integrated infrastructure ecosystem enhances the resilience and readiness to react on societal challenges. And, and uh, the COVID situation now is just a clear demonstration of it. It shall be highlighted that thematic research infrastructures, irrespectively whether national, pan-European, or just institutional, uh, and this is in apostrophe, are closely interconnected with those is infrastructures which are typically attributed to us, namely the, the, the e infrastructures, the data infrastructures. And uh, all kinds of these infrastructures share a common space and not only in the EOS exchange part of, of the EOS structure. It is very important in these respects uh, that research infrastructures are very close to scientific standards uh, of the diverse uh, research communities. And thus they are very well suited to, to, to connect interface or bridge scientific users to EOS. It shall also be remembered that the vast majority of funding comes from national funders and that changes in national priorities may have significant impact, not only on the research infrastructures themselves, but may also influence the EOS implementation if not uh, properly uh, considered, accounted and planned for. Uh, let me now spend the last minute on the crucial role of research infrastructures for, for EOS. Uh, the thematic research infrastructures are not only users and important data contributors, but they are also very important service providers and have to offer a huge expertise in data management, data creation, data interoperability. They have uh, developed already now and utilizing that, dedicating tools and services, and they are indeed forming a horizontally and cross-disciplinary interconnected research infrastructure uh, ecosystem with, with data uh, shared and uh, an essential element of this. Research infrastructures bridge the research communities and, and create an interoperability metadata standard framework, which has to be incorporated properly into the uh, EOSC architecture. If something good is used and exists, it shall not be discovered again. Taken together, the analysis we have done shows that there has been a significant progress across Europe in EOSC related activities, accompanied by investments in 
e-infrastructure, data-oriented infrastructures, and research infrastructure. For EOS to reach its full potential, these investments need to be federated or made at least accessible to users through EOS. Also, EOS has not been very visible up to now as a part of national investment strategies. There is evidence that future policies and strategies will increasingly align around this concept. Monitoring of infrastructures, and I will come again to this element, will and shall help EOS implementation and development while monitoring of national open science and, and data policies will help the long-term EOSC development and sustainability. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jan. And uh, we have received a couple of comments uh, about specific projects or infrastructures uh, uh, in the Zoom chat. Uh, but maybe because we are running a little bit of late, uh, I suggest that now we move on to the German initiative. And then uh, you can still add the questions. And, and I make sure that in the end, we have time to uh, uh, have questions and answers. Uh, so please, uh, professors Jörg Schrovetta, uh, Saslan, and uh, Wolf, so now I hand the mic to you. Thank you very much for the handover. I switch on my slides. Uh, please indicate if you can see the slides. Is it okay? okay yes, very I'm good. Presentation mode. Yeah, coming. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for handing over and for the nice introduction of the EOSC landscape. Uh, me and the two further uh, presenters are here to give you an overview of an ongoing initiative, the National Research Data Infrastructure in Germany. And we really just started. Uh, so I was hired in March 2020. And since then, I'm the director of the uh, NFDI. And actually, since October 1st, uh, the so-called consortia are being uh, funded. And two of the consortia have the opportunity to present first strategies and visions uh, and the path to follow for the future. But first of all, let's start with a little introduction. So here's my motivation and my vision. You probably all are familiar with these uh, with these words, but it is. I think it's a, it's a good thing to introduce uh, what we're talking about. And of course, I'm quoting here the so-called FAIR paper, the paper on the FAIR principles, where the author said more and more research results are achieved by using already existing research data. And it seems like a common uh, saying by now, but it's far from being trivial uh, that this is the case. But of course, we all know that data is exploding and research data is exploding, but still we struggle with using them in a very intuitive manner uh, where the right research data can be accessed by the right person just by the flip of a fingertip. That was a promise of knowledge management in the early 2000s, you might remember this saying, uh, but uh, we're still struggling in providing this kind of access for research data and to make to derive knowledge out of research data. Uh, however, now uh, there are significant efforts um, involved, as you know, and I was a researcher, I was researching myself until March, so I know what I'm talking about. Finding the right data set sometimes is very tedious. Um, and then to understand the data set is far from being trivial, then to use it or to reuse it can become really difficult. In machine learning, uh, we are, we're having more data now than ever. We are really drowning in data sets and also in methods to explore the data sets. And only if we describe the data in a meaningful way so that humans can understand what is in the data and maybe increasingly also machines can understand what is in the data, then you can automatically run experiments um, and maybe run series of experiments varying uh, certain parameters and then achieving better results and a better overview. And of course, if you publish and republish your data sets and your results, this is what really drives forward research. So this is the motivation that also holds for us. And a nice picture here is that we want to enable researchers to stand on the shoulders of giants. This is a, a nice picture 
here shown in a figure from southern Germany, approximately 1410. And the idea is if you are sitting on the shoulders of a giant, of course, you can see further and farther away. And by reusing data from previous research generations, this is the kind of metaphor we are enabling here. We are stand uh, on these on their shoulders. Still, research data sets as of today, uh, they are decentral, often project finance, and sometimes only temporarily stored. On the European level, EOSC uh, should really pave the way to provide an infrastructure on the European level. And we as a national initiatives are very happy to contribute to this European vision by organizing the landscape in Germany. So our mission, our vision, and our uh, spirit is that research data sets are fair for all and forever. And of course, these two additions, they are really something to discuss about. So of course, you know that fair is findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. Uh, but now what does for all mean? Who is all, right? This is something we need to define very specifically. And for example, in social science, uh, we have uh, person-related data, which is of sensitive nature. So only privileged pe persons uh, that have a common, uh, that have a clear uh, a mission to work with the data and have the right to work with the data should have the right access. But of course, some other data might be freely available on the web. And then there's this saying forever. Uh, some of you might be aware that long-term archive archiving and long-term preservation still is a largely unsolved issue uh, from, from technical and also from process side, but we have to really come up with uh, new solutions here. So forever, I always make a little blink and quote uh, some uh, from, from a book from my youth, which you might also know, where Alice is saying, how long is forever? And the white rabbit answers, sometimes it's just for a second. And this brings me to another issue. Sometimes you don't want to keep the raw data because it's just too much volume. And then you just need to keep the aggregated data and the pre-processed data. And sometimes it does make sense. And we need to specifically find out where this is the case. Now, what is the NFDI? Well, in my view, in my, uh, in my vision, and uh, this is the first version of a mission statement, the NFDI should be a living network of active and actively engaged partners coming from research organizations who jointly share goals and values, who have an aspiration for high quality, and that in a dialogue with and according to the needs of science deliver research infrastructure services. And this is something which I think makes NFDI, at least from a certain angle, quite unique. Every consortium has researchers and research infrastructures on board. So it's a co-invention uh, co of new services by having users and providers at the same time. And I think this is really the way to go forward. I think this is also something we need to address on the European level, maybe more stronger in the future. Here's an overview of the consortia from the first round. Uh, and from the names, you can uh, try to estimate what is their what is the main research area? It's data plant, GHDA, uh, consort S SWT, NFDI for biodiversity, NFDI for cat it's catalysis, NFDI for chem chemistry, NFDI for culture, NFDI for health, and NFDI for inch. That's of course the engineering sciences. We are in round one out of three rounds, uh, which means in future more consortia should be uh, taken on board. So the Neuen Consortia from the first round should be scaled up to a, a total number of 30 consortia. And the main aim is to really have a broad coverage of all research areas. As of now, we have more than 100 co-applicant organizations coming from the nine consortia. We have over 150 co-spokespersons uh, with whom I'm interacting. And actually, if you look at the large picture, then it's more than 270 organizations that are participating as further participants. And that already show, gives you a glimpse on the power and the size of the network that we are about to start. Uh, in, in the NFDI directorate, I'm co-heading the directorate with Eva Lübke. She's the second in the picture, in the slides of pictures, and she's the administrative uh, head of the directorate, whereas I'm the scientific director. And along with us, we have five employees. Uh, there's one picture missing. I'm sorry for that. We still need to take the picture. Uh, so it's Hendrik Salzmuskaliuk, Jennifer Knebels, uh, Sophie Kraft, 
and Elena Wessner and newly, to, uh, newly has joined also Angela Schmalen. So we are seven persons. And next year, we want to scale up uh, to about uh, 17 people in the NFDI directorate. And this will be the central, stay, uh, the central directorate to organize and to coordinate all the activities among the nine consortia. Now, this should have given you a nice overview of what we are and where we're heading to. And it is a great pleasure now to introduce uh, my first co-speaker, who happens to be Christoph Wolf from the Consortium Consort SVD. Christoph, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, Jörg. And you will support me by uh, forwarding the slides? Exactly. Either you give me a, an audio hint or you make a click with your finger. If I see it, I do it. If I'm too late, please give me a hint. Thank you. Yes, uh, colleagues, um, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here and to be able to present one of the consortia in the um, national research data infrastructure of Germany. Um, I can represent the consortia for the social sciences. We cover, uh, it says here, social, behavioral, educational sciences, economics, it's um, anthropology, psychology. So it's really a very broad um, uh, coverage of the social sciences. Um, we have a long history going back to the year 2000, at least, in working together. And uh, 12 years ago, the German Data Forum was um, formed. I think we have data fora also in other countries. So you might be familiar with that format. Um, the special um, thing about the forum is that it is composed, as Jörg already said, uh, for the NFDI. It is composed of researchers and infrastructure providers to equal measures to speak with each other and for the one side to learn what the other needs and vice versa. So um, the members of this uh, German Data Forum, which we are now funding through the consort SWD, the members are elected by scientific associations. In the last election this year, we had over 3,500 voters. So you see there's a large um, backup in the community of consort SWD. The elected members represent the professional associations and they help the consortium to um, define and identify services that are really needed in the community. Please, next slide. Um, the backbone of the um, infrastructure are now 34 research data centers. We have four or five more at the moment um, that want to um, join the research data center landscape. It's a longer process of um, going through quality assurance measures, and then eventually you can become one of the RDCs in our network. These RDCs cover a lot of big um, um, topics. It's health. Um, the Robert Koch Institute nowadays with the COVID pandemic is very, um, visible in Germany at the moment, maybe even on a European landscape, they have an RDC, the Federal Employment Agency, the German uh, Statistical Office. So all the large entities that hold data, almost all of them have research data centers uh, providing the research community with data through their services. Please, next slide. The consortium, um, as I said, is already working. Um, and in the past, it was um, based on um, a, a slightly different regime that we have now. But here you see we offer approximately 4,000 data sets to our users. We had in 2018 uh, almost 50,000 users, external users, over 70,000 downloads. and People just do not only download data, they also publish. Um, so we have over 2000 scientific publications based on the data that Consort SWD is offering. And we do this uh, based on the work of almost 300 full-time equivalent employees. Please. 
Yes, I already talked a little bit or mentioned the topics of the data. Um, we make it our aim to contribute to the big um, social um, challenges. Um, here we uh, chose the sustainable development goals of the UN. And in particular, these three goals are goals that are based or that you can research based on data that we offer no poverty, reduce inequalities for sustainable cities and communities, for instance, by the RDCs uh, with the title Integration and Migration. Um, here we actually have two different research data centers, or the future of work and labor based in uh, Bonn at the ITSA, or for instance, attitudes and social developments can be uh, researched um, based on cases, RDCs, or poverty in many different research data centers, the SERP, the employment agencies, and others. Next slide, please. We are not only focused on the German landscape with many different uh, actors here, but we're also holding close ties to the European level. Um, actors in members of the consortia are um, members of the ERICs, of CESTA ERIC, ESS ERIC, and SHARE ERIC, so the three uh, social science ERICs on the European landscape, and also of CLARIN, the humanities um, ERIC. The ERICs, for those of you who do not know this acronym, are European Research Infrastructure Consortia. They all work together in a project right now called S-Shock. And Oops. maybe you can go back. And S-Shock also feeds directly and is connected with the AESC. So we are, thank you. We are at least um, indirectly, but also contributing directly to the EASC marketplace and catalog. And my organization that I represent cases has already registered one service with AOS, and we hope very much that we, through the NFDI, will register more services to, to uh, with EOS and make them available on a European landscape. Thank you very much, York. And I think my time is up. Thank you very much, and sorry for messing up my mouse <laughs> click. <laughs> Um, this, this was one of the nine consortia, and it is my great pleasure to also have the second. And maybe we can answer the question about the kittens also, which was posted in the forum at the end of the slides, if you have time. Meta, please. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jörg. So I will uh, present the NFTE for CAT, and uh, CAT, it's not CAT. Um, Catalysis, not cats. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I, um, some of you per perhaps are disappointed. Um, so, uh, so it is a great pleasure to be here and also to show our, our activities in the NFDE for ca uh, for cat. So, why catalysis? So, catalysis are used in over ninety percent of all chemical and refining process. So on the right side, you see a report from 2016 um, about the market of, um, of catalyst and added value with catalyst. So sometimes it's not very obvious uh, the product what you see during uh, all the day, but most of the products are produced by a catalytic process. And um, the, um, also with the um, chemical reaction, which we are, uh, want to uh, investigate here, um, we are accelerate and become more efficient in the consumption of energy and resources. And if you are also thinking on carbon neutral mobility, it would be not possible without catalysis. So, and also with the green sustainable future of uh, economy. So catalysis plays in uh, each of these processes and in each of the challenging in the society and in the economy, a very, very important role. Next slide, please. 
So let me f uh, introduce you the consortium. So the consortium is uh, structured or it's um, headed by the Deshima. The Deshima is a nonprofit organization. It's uh, built an expert network from chemical engineering, engineering to biochemist, uh, bio technology uh, in the different fields of society, science, economy, and academia. So, and uh, our research or uh, what we want is that we have a data-driven catalysis research. At the moment, uh, everybody doing his research in his own lab and we are have small collaboration um, or sharing by bilateral our data, but we want to think bigger and, um, and normally the catalysis has somehow the touch of the black, uh, it's a black magic, but we want to go from the black magic to the digital catalysis because we want to reuse the data, we want to share the data and exchange the data. And therefore we have a broad participants of users from university, from Max Planck Institute, from Helmholtz Institute and Leibniz Institute. But I have to say we are scientists, so we can uh, understand or somehow understand uh, catalysis in a certain level, but we have to also to learn how to handle the data. And therefore the data experts and providers are also very important. And this is everything involved in the NFDE and also in our NFDE for CAD. Especially in our case, we are strongly working together with the um, HLRS Stuttgart and the Fraunhofer Focus in Berlin. And our um, NFDE for CAD, uh, goals and uh, activities has also a strong relation uh, with the other uh, consortia in the NFTE. So for example, when we are talking about catalysis, we have also to think about how to engineer the reactor. So also uh, there is a strong link or a strong dialogue also with the NFTE for Inc. And we want to convert uh, components. So components are somehow molecules or atoms. So again, we have also a strong collaboration uh, and we are strong uh, just, um, sharing with us uh, the, um, the data and also how to handle the um, data infrastructure with the NFTE for CHEM. So for, for example, we are organizing a joint workshop about metadata standards and ontology. And since uh, the catalysis has an important role in the society and the economy, we, our advisory board it's, uh, consists of uh, different chemical industry partners. And also for us, it's also interesting to see how the digitalization is working in the industry and, um, and how we can uh, learn from the industry how to digital, digitalize our data and also the other uh, way around. Next slide. So our black magic catalysis. So, so we want to uh, make a bridge about the different fields. Normally uh, it's based on the empirical data. And as I said, it is a um, local produce this data and we have a bilateral exchange, but we want to go over this bilateral exchange. So we want to share our data, we want to exchange, we want to reuse our data um, according to the principles of uh, FAIR. So, and, but we have the challenge that we are combining heterogeneous, homogeneous, electrocatalysis, photocatalysis. We combining ex um, experimental researchers with theoretical researchers and engineers. And the, we have to um, develop also um, um, a, a common language. So therefore the ontology will be and metadata standard will play an important role for us. And uh, we hope that, that due to uh, the interaction between the different fields that there will be a cross disciplinary research in fundamental and applied catalysis. So we want to go back as on, we want to leave the black magic box. And it also should improve the digital and RMD skills in the community, especially if we are talking about young researchers, PhD students, and we want to involve the digitalization and catalysis in the education in the university. 
So, um, so the general goal is to facilitate the collaboration in, on data level and uh, provide education and trainings. Next slide. So, and we, um, we have many things to do. So the dream is, and we should have some dreams, <laughs> is uh, from the molecules coming to the process. And perhaps you can imagine from a molecule uh, with few atoms to a process where you have a reactor and all the infrastructure uh, and the large, uh, it is in a different length scale and time scale, it can be a very long way. But hopefully with all the joint uh, work together, we will manage that in the NFTE for CAD and we will uh, manage also uh, to facilitate the, um, the process on data level. So, and, and in the catalysis, uh, therefore, um, the chemical engineering also play an important role. We are um, we are very broad uh, in our um, NFTE forecast. So looking at the activity in the atomic level, understanding uh, what is going on, what are the physical processes, what is the kinetics, figure out the active sites, as is the black box and also bring it that in a reactor and in a process and therefore we are in a different kind of levels which need to um, work together and also cross-linking to each other and um, therefore the data um, please next slide so the data what we are producing it's not only in the a reactor. So we have data from the synthesis, we have data from the operando study, we have data from the performance and characterization. And this will be perhaps somehow the chemical reaction. But when we go to the reactor or to the process engineering, we have to consider the heat transport data, the kinetic data, the process design data, and the energy and cost data. And these different levels we want uh, to work on in, in the NFTE for CAD. We want uh, to capture um, to capture the needs of the community and also develop a plan uh, for the digitalization of the catalysis in science. And uh, this is what our purpose is in our NFTE for CAD. And I hope I can good, uh, give you a good overview. Thanks. Thank yeah, you very thank much you very for much. all the presenters. And now I'm happy to open the question and answer session. And uh, I will start with the, uh, there's a question about uh, grand challenges. You mentioned that, uh, are you talking about societal challenges or what is the grand challenges uh, on the slides referred to? This was one of the questions. Do you want to say a few words about this? I would say these are societal problems, but of course the environment is a societal problem as well, climate change. Um, so I think the, 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 the special thing about these challenges is that they cannot be usually worked on from one discipline alone, but have to have interdisciplinary collaborations, um, collaborations across borders um, to be able to come up with just ideas for solutions. And as an example, I use the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals of the UN, that uh, where the UN actually mentions the problems that they believe are core to a further development of human mankind. Thank you. This explains this very, very well. Uh, then the next question, uh, has to do with the different uh, differences between disciplines and uh, their fair readiness. Uh, so how do you achieve a broad coverage of domains given that this is competitive action and uh, some research areas might be much more affine to fair than others? I can, I can take it. Thanks. Uh, so the first round of consortia is already covering basically all uh, for let's say the four big res uh, research areas. So from that perspective, you could say we are already have a certain level of completeness with respect to understanding how different communities work. But of course, research has become sometimes even fine grained 
Uh, that means some research areas are very elaborated and have very thin thin lines. And there you have differences in the cultures. Uh, and of course, we try to reach as many as possible of them. I think it's good to, to, to have like lighthouse uh, communities where the sharing of data has become uh, a sine qua non, like, and maybe social sciences is a very good example here because they they really rely on this data. And for more than 20 years, they are, archiving their data uh, and even longer, they are archiving their data and sharing the data with all researchers and they have a common understanding of what data quality is. And so they all benefit from having these fair principles already in place to a certain degree. And we can show this to other communities uh, and, and then sh share the experiences, what the benefits are and what the challenges are. And hopefully we can help to solve the challenges for the individual community. And we want to do this for as many research domains as possible, and then still have the, the breath also to help the ones uh, that maybe so far aren't data-driven. Because this is the second element, more and more research areas are becoming data-driven. Um, and therefore, at some point of time, they will have this, the same problems that all research areas have in this area. And if we then are bright and shining and say, look, we have solutions for you, talk, come and talk to us, uh, we are willing to help you, then we can uh, create solutions even beyond the scope of our funding. And this is what we are aiming, especially also on the European level. Thank you. Then the next question would go uh, to Mehtap, and this has to do with the cat uh, catalysis. Uh, uh, are actually there are two. One is uh, what kind of numerical simulation are you using at your different scale molecular modeling, for example? And the second question is: uh, Are you considering semantic interoperability rather than or in addition to data interoperability? So the first question is easy to answer. Yes, all of them. <laughs> Since we are investigating the uh, and on the atomic level until to the um, uh, engineering level, so um, process uh, engineering and reactor engineering. Um, the second question, could you repeat that, please? Sure. So that has to, had to do with the semantic interoperability. So are you considering semantic interoperability rather than or in addition to data interoperability? So semantic versus data. Um, it is um, at the moment very difficult to answer this question because as um, uh, Jörg uh, said at the beginning, we recently started with that. And um, for example, the um, um, in the catalysis, we are somehow, um, or most of them are new in this field of digital digitalization of data. So we have, for example, uh, the chemical engineering, they are using, for example, this ONTO, uh, which is developed in RWTH, Aachen. Um, but uh, in the electrocatalysis or chemical or molecular catalysis, this is uh, somehow a way uh, where we have to figure out which, is, which approach would be the best. And they are for, therefore, this is good that we are also uh, uh, discussing with the other NFTEs uh, consortia to figure out how they handle that. Thank you. Uh, Jörg, you may would I, like to add I, something, please? If, if I may, yeah. Sure. Uh, so, of course, semantics is my home turf. This is where <laughs> I did my PhD and worked for a number of times. And this is also uh, where, where we want to share experiences. Uh, like we have some consortia who, who already have experiences in semantic modeling. NFDI for culture is one of those uh, consortia who are already paving the way. And we are organizing this metadata and ontology workshop where all consortia are participating. And some of them are new to the domain of semantic modeling. This is where we also started the knowledge transfer into the uh, various domains. And to give you an idea for some of these consortia, uh, it might be relevant um, also to, to push their modelings into something like Wikidata, so it becomes global knowledge. And then we share it with the rest of the world, potentially in all languages uh, that, that are being maintained for these concepts. So our vision is really to create metadata and ontologies 
uh, domain specific uh, in a domain specific way, but to align them and to share them with the rest of the world, potentially via uh, portals just like Wikidata. Thank you. Uh, then we have still a few minutes left, and the next question would go to Jan. Uh, so, would you like to comment uh, uh, the relationship between EOSC and HPC? There is a question that what about the use of Phoenix to bridge EOSC to HPC? So, praise Esfri Landmark providing access to your HPC resources. Uh, thank, thank, thank you. Uh, I have seen seen this this question, and uh, in fact, I have a rather ignorant answer to it, because in my view, <clears throat> EOSC is and and will be for for a while a very complex and still evolving system, and uh, in that respect, uh, there will and uh, must be many contributions. Uh, which are at the moment somewhere uh, considered as, as border cases. And uh, I know that uh, there is a huge dispute in the community uh, to which extent uh, HPC uh, shall be in the core of, of EOSC or whether it shall be uh, pushed more towards uh, EOSC exchange. Uh, for me, it's it's more or less an arbitrary question, because as as we have seen also in in the German case, uh, the the focus is on the researchers, and the researcher as a user shall somehow uh, get very deeply involved in articulating which services he she needs and which are in the focus, and uh, those uh, services have to build. Uh, the, 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 the kernel of the, not to say core, you know, uh, just to build the kernel of, 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 the, of the EOS, if EOS shall be successful. And I mean, we shall really uh, understand that this development is an ongoing process with several iterative solutions. It's a kind of snowball where starting from, from this EOS core and this uh, vaguely predefined uh, structure, we will uh, develop according to the evolving science, evolving to the, to the capabilities of, of all the players to, to contribute and uh, the request which is formulated by the scientists. So uh, yes, uh, in that sense, uh, my, my response is positive. Uh, I don't understand all the technicalities, uh, but I guess one can hardly speak about uh, e-infrastructure, data infrastructures uh, without, without a strong computational component. And uh, whether it's EuroHPC or others, I mean, uh, the future will show. Uh, thank you. Then... Uh, I think I have to uh, raise the last question. Uh, this is still about FAIR and uh, data. Uh, so in general, thank you very much for the good overlook. Uh, how do you are planning to achieve the FAIR principles for hot and published data sets in the area in uh, uh, NFDI? And hot means here uh, not published data. I can say a few words. Sure. Um, yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting question uh, because there are so many different kinds of not yet published data sets. Um, and we, are, we have to look into the, into the various research domains to really find a way to unlock this data. And in, in areas like chemistry, where you have, for example, laboratories, uh, a lot of metadata is being kept in handwritten documents still, like the lab notebooks. And therefore, one of the key aims in this area is to create electronic lab notebooks in an open source version, which can be distributed to all uh, researchers in, uh, in a free manner. Um, and the uh, particular feature of, of this ELN, which we want to enable, is that it is being bound or, or uh, 
that it is uh, connected to a number of repositories. So, so then if you're in your workflow in your daily routine as a chemist, uh, chemist for example, doing some kind of experiments, it is part of, of your normal workflow mm -hmm. to publish the data uh, into such a repository. And then of course you have data sovereignty in the sense that you can decide whether or not to publish this data set to predefined target groups. But uh, very often the burden is just too big to digitize the data. But of course, modern infrastructures more and more just create digital data by nature. And this is where we want to, to take the lead and push forwards these infrastructures. Of course, knowing that there are also some legacy tasks to be solved. Uh, so we will not be able to renovate all the laboratories uh, in, in one step with electronic lab notebooks. But the more examples and the more front runners you have, the quicker it will spread over the whole community. This was one example from chemistry. Of course, there are other communities. And just to show you the bandwidth, uh, we are also having NFDI for culture, where cultural objects are being digitized. And they're one of the key uh, key problems we have to address is how to deal with um, with the licensing issues if you want to do research with modern music, for example. Uh, then we just simply cannot pay all the fees for licensees just to get a data set. This is also some kind of not published data set, you could say. But we have to to uh, to follow a completely different path to unlock such kind of data for research purposes. So there's not the one size fits all answer, but it's rather we're having a structured process to find out what the problems are in the individual communities. And then we are addressing this on a large scale. Uh, and whenever possible, we want to share the experiences with other domains so they can reuse the solution that we found. Thank you very much. I, uh, I'm looking at the clock and we are fin uh, approaching the end of our session. I really want to warmly thank all of our excellent speakers uh, uh, and all the participants. We had more than 240 uh, people taking part in this session. Uh, all those slides will be available uh, if I have understood correctly afterwards. Uh, and then they also contacted a lot of uh, links so that you can uh, find further information. Uh, uh, to kind of sum up, uh, I think this session has wonderfully demonstrated uh, the importance of taking into account the different needs of different disciplines. But most importantly, that we are building EOSC, we are building national initiatives on data, not for not only for research, but kind of for bigger purposes. So uh, this was very inspiring and uh, I think gives a uh, good, good material to work on. And I especially want to thank our German colleagues for uh, get, getting all us uh, involved and, and explaining uh, the exciting initiative taking place in Germany. So thank you, everybody. Uh, the program continues. I think now we have a break and then there is still one session for today. Uh, so uh, have a good afternoon. And then uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll see you soon again. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye.